Welcome to the Mint Door Podcast with Dr. Karen Tyndall and Dr. Laura Schwint. Are you a high achiever feeling the burnout blues? Well, the Mint Door Podcast is your oasis. Before we introduce you to today's phenomenal guest, we're extending an invitation to something extraordinary. We're mixing up the perfect antidote to burnout with our Mint Julep newsletter, a weekly dose of inspiration delivered straight to your inbox. Now, each edition of the Mint Julep is more than just words on a page. It delivers connection, brimming with inspiration, positivity, and a dash of fun. Think of it as your virtual happy hour with a supportive community of high achievers. We'll help you unwind, recharge, and rediscover the joy in every day. You can subscribe to the Mint Julep newsletter and let's clean glasses or coffee mugs to live a more inspired, joyful life one week at a time. Perhaps you're more of a visual learner. Well, we've got you covered too. All of our podcasts plus bite-sized coaching tips are available on our YouTube channel that you can find at youtube.com forward slash at the mint door. There you can subscribe for happiness on the go. So welcome to another inspiring episode of the Mint Door podcast. Today, we are thrilled to introduce Daniela Skeen, a dynamic speaker, coach, and practice management consultant. As the owner and founder of Denta Edge, Daniela empowers dental professionals with effective processes and accountability measures, driving practice growth and leadership development. Her expertise extends to her role as CFO of National Direct Signs, making her a recognized influencer in dentistry. Daniela excels in intentional communication, practice operation, financials, scheduling, and protocols. Additionally, she coaches dental assistants through Dr. Anissa Holmes' Delivering Wow's Platinum Coaching Program. So let's get ready for an engaging conversation packed with valuable insights and practical tips to elevate your dental practice. Daniela's passion and expertise will leave you inspired and ready to take your practice to the next level. So join me as we meet with Daniela Skeen. So hi, everybody, and we are here with Danny today. Thank you, Danny, for joining us in the Mint Door. Oh, it's a, it's a pleasure for me to be here. I'm thrilled and honored, and I'm excited to have this conversation. Yeah, well, I've been looking forward to this all day because I knew I was going to see that big smile of yours uh, opposite me on the screen. So let's waste no time and let's jump into some of the really good things that we're going to talk about. So we know that you are an expert and passionate about communication. And I was wondering that if you have one communication secret that you swear by to turn, as you'd say, frowns upside down and win patients over. Yes, I would say that um, the most underrated uh, communication secret that most people do not utilize enough is actually listening. Mm. So when it comes to communication, there's two aspects. There's nonverbal and verbal uh, communication styles. And oftentimes when we're communicating with our patients, when when they're having some type of difficulty or they're having an issue in terms of understanding the treatment plan you re- recommended, maybe they have an outstanding insurance bill that they don't understand and they're having some frustrations or even anxiety around those areas, just taking that moment to truly genuinely be curious and Mm -hmm. empathetically listen to what they're saying and then ask them questions, probe. So I often say it, and I'm sure many people who are listening have, have heard this expression before. Don't listen to reply, listen to understand. Mm -hmm. And when we can do that one thing, that one active listening strategy or tip that will make a patient feel seen, heard, and understood. And it really does have a a direct impact on their loyalty to your office because patients don't expect perfection. 
unfortunately, there's, you know, even though we all want and strive to be excellent and, you know, we want to excel in our field, there is a small margin of error. There are things that are going to happen, um, human error that are going to, that's going to happen within the dental practice or the billing. But if we can just take that moment to really try to understand them, that that will make them feel so good and it creates an emotional connection which transcends beyond transactional relations mm -hmm. so that's that's like my number one tip and believe it or not that's something that i constantly work on each and every single day i continue to work on it and the one question i ask myself every day is Am I listening enough and understanding this patient or this my spouse or my children to truly genuinely understand their needs? And it is an actively ongoing process. Yeah, I think it's and it seems so obvious, doesn't it? It's like communication. Well, it's big whatever how much of it maybe more than 50 percent is the listening mm -hmm. but that's the part of it that and until you draw attention to it people are so caught up with well what am I going to do next and how am I going to get to where we need to be that they've already skipped over that listening um yeah and there's you know and you know and I also think that you know when it comes to a dental practice you know things are so there's so many moving parts in a dental practice, right? Oftentimes, if there's one dentist, if it's a small dental practice, and let's say there's five team members or six team members, and there's you know one hygiene or two hygiene, two dental assistants, one office manager, uh, one treatment coordinator, there's so many moving parts. So the dentist truly, genuinely is wearing a lot of hats, and they're moving all over the place. So it's not that they intend to listen I think it's just more of a time crunch situation mm -hmm. that happens more often than not and we have to be really intentional about how we want to uh, communicate with our patients and one of the tips the most important tips in my is being extremely intentional about how we listen to their needs and their wants mm -hmm. do you find that individuals that you work with listen better when they're more relaxed as opposed to stressed absolutely mm -hmm. one without a doubt um stress causes anxiety i mean i know this is your field right mm -hmm. you're you, you you help with burnout and um those stress responsors put you in fight or flight and you biologically like the chemistry that's going on in your brain you can't even think correctly Right. Yeah. And so I, I, I genuinely believe that if your body is in a stressful state, if your mind is, is in a stressful state, that you will be incapable to listen or to communicate at the best capacity, like the best way that you really can. Not saying you're not going to be able to do it, but you probably could be better at it. Mm -hmm. and really push the envelope and it, when you're more relaxed and in a, a less stressful state yeah I think I think that just it makes so much sense that if you're relaxed then and also probably I think it I'm thinking about it now but your brain when you are stressed is busy mm -hmm. and it can't be fully present in that moment um that knowing knowing as a coach how difficult it is to, I'm going to give an example. You can have a, you could have had a stressful conversation with somebody the minute before you're about to hop on a coaching call. Mm -hmm. And yet it is very difficult to go straight from a stressful situation to sitting there being fully present to somebody that if that happens, I mean, I had, I had this, it happened to me just this morning. I had to, I was literally getting off one call and I had 30 seconds left. And all I had to do was sit here just shut my eyes and just breathe mm. just to mm. bring the energy down, bring my brain or the busyness out and say, okay, that goes to one side. Now I'm here for this person. Because and so that's difficult. 
Oh yeah. So that really took intention on your end. Mm -hmm. You yeah. really focused on your breathing. You mm -hmm. focused on your intention for what you want to deliver and bring to the next client. Yeah. And when we're jumping room to room, let's say in a dental practice, and we don't reset, so to speak, before we walk into the next operatory, that's where the disconnect can happen. And oftentimes patients feel that energy you bring with you. Oh, totally. I think that's probably one of the most things, one of the things that we most underestimate is how much patients pick up on the energy in a dental practice when they walk through the door. It's not something that's obvious, you know, you can't see it, but then them sensing it so that kind of brings me to my second question of do you have a real I mean you have lots of real life examples but maybe share one with us about a customer service you know experience from a team where they went that extra mile and they were able to transform something yeah um so one that I can think of recently is actually uh, a doctor and her team that I'm working with uh actually right now the last two months. And um, this doctor came to me, she needed some help with training some of her team members just to really help them understand the importance of customer service, really, um, and the intricacies of communicating, verbal communication, nonverbal communication. And so I have this one, uh, one patient of theirs in specific, briefly uh, chat about and this patient came in and they had a lot of anxiety or it was a woman I'm not gonna say anybody's name it was a woman she came into the practice and the treatment coordinator um, um, because she knew she had so much anxiety from the phone call because I implemented a new patient form checklist mm -hmm. that we have to screen all the patients we have to really engage and ask them questions so that we can really as soon as they walk into the practice so the treatment quarter goes out she you know she she acknowledges the patient she welcomes the patient to the practice she says we're so happy to have you um um you know can I get you any water you know would you mm -hmm. like any tea um and then she said no thank you she stayed there full mouth reconstruction okay she hasn't been in a dentist in like five or six years she was able to go back uh to see the doctor the doctor was able to sit down with her right um have a conversation face to face uh, I know when I was going into the practice the doctor was standing up having conversations down mm -hmm. so I talked to the doctor and said you know we want to be face to face with the patient so that we can have more connection um and the doctor was really able to connect with this patient she started crying in the dental chair <laughs> <laughs> But I was so happy about um, the way that they treated her because she said that she never has felt more understood um, from a dentist before. Um, mm -hmm. Now, granted, she hasn't been to a dentist in like five years, but her past experience has um, has not been good. And um, us being able to cater more, more time to her um, has really helped her get the treatment done. So what ended up happening? She needed a lot of treatment. She needed to discuss treatment with her husband. So we said, okay, well, we're not going to go over this treatment. This is a lot of treatment. And why don't we have a Zoom call with your husband? And the treatment coordinator was able to close the treatment over Zoom, go over everything with, with the husband and her and they were able to close a $30,000 case over Zoom. And that was the first case that the treatment coordinator closed, not only via Zoom, but also in that magnitude. And she paid in full on the same day. And so you don't get to that type of caliber or you're not able to help those types of patients without going above and beyond, without doing all of the steps, it's, you know, um, as soon as you pick up the phone, the way you pick up the phone, the tone, mm -hmm. you know, um, making sure you're not rushing them off the phone. Um, I, I, I can't emphasize this enough, but I call dental practices and, you know, I know that the administrative team is handling a lot of tasks. They want to get you off the phone, you know, they 
kind of rushing you, but you could feel the energy and you could hear in their pitch and their tone mm -hmm. um, that they're trying to get you off the phone. They're cueing you. And so I had to really work with uh, the admin team and the treatment coordinator to help them understand we need to slow down. We need to slow down mm -hmm. because rushing patients is not, is not helping them. It, it just causes more anxiety, more fear, and more distrust. And those are the and those are the things that are typically associated with dentists. Yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, so it's kind of like um we're we're reverse engineering um how we communicate with patients. And so I was very proud of that and I was very excited for the team. And we're not done. We're doing some more work around um trying to help patients get better with financing and having more options available for those individuals that um, let's say cannot afford dental treatment to that, you know, to that capacity. Uh, but that's just one experience. And, and, and there's others where, you know, we've been able to treat patients same day that had emergencies where they called like three or four different offices. And even if we weren't able to start treatment, the doctor was able to see them and prescribe them some type of, um, um, you know, antibiotic augmentin. Mm -hmm. I, I had another one. I'm just going to throw this out. We were all leaving the office, right? It was like six o'clock at night mm -hmm. and a, a, a guy came in and he was swollen. So the doctor, he says, can you see me? I'm in so much pain. And we were done, but the doctor was like, let's just see him. And they took a CT scan on him and he had such a huge abscess. His face was swollen. The doctor uh, prescribed him augmentin. And she said, I'm so glad you came in. Uh, we can't even do the treatment because you have so much infection. We have to give it a couple of days. That she says he would have been in the hospital if it mm -hmm. would have just been a couple more days or a week. Yeah. And, um, you know, just going the extra mile, right? Just, you know, we didn't have to do that. We were closed. Everyone could have left the office, but we genuinely cared for that. Um, it was a new patient, actually. It just patient walked in, honestly. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and we tried to provide a high level customer service. And he came back to see the oral surgeon and he didn't even care how much it cost. When the yeah. treatment coordinator went in there, he was just like, I don't care, put on my card. He didn't even care. Not that we charge, you know, anything crazy, you know, we had to just extract two teeth, but he didn't even care about it. Mm -hmm. He was just grateful that we were there to support him, to hear what he had to say and to, um, and to help him get through, um, you know, this hard time that he's going through. Yeah. It's, it's amazing how one action of yours in how you interact with somebody has such a massive impact for them. And that makes me think equally of when things don't go as planned, how you can actually also have the same result with having people, even when there's been an issue, just how you deal with that. Is that mm -hmm. something that you see as well? Yeah, um, I actually, when I'm working with teams, um, I, one of the things that I work on uh, is building mental toughness and, and resilience mm -hmm. and um and how we need to um be agile you know have agility that that's super critical and important in our day and age because yeah. things are going to go unplanned throughout the day mm -hmm. and when you're type a type of person you know I'm, I'm kind of like that you know you're very organized you're structured you like you know be set if one thing goes off that can just throw you off and it could throw a patient off too as mm -hmm. well. So I like to really um, educate everyone on the importance of expecting the unexpected. And when it happens, we deal with it. And mm -hmm. there is no problem that doesn't have a solution. Mm -hmm. And so when I talk to patients, right, or if I'm training someone to talk to a patient and there's an issue, a billing issue, or there is um, a, an issue with some of their treatment, the number one thing that I try to focus on is helping them feel heard, 100% mm -hmm. critical, and helping them understand that their problem is very important to me. Mm -hmm. 
So when patients know that we're taking their problem, no matter how small it might be, seriously, immediately that will conflict. Immediately. Because oftentimes it's like, oh, well, it's just a $50 bill or, oh, it's not a big deal or, oh, it's just an insurance. That's how we can think sometimes, but to them, it's important. And if it's important to them, then it's important to me and it's a high priority for me. And yeah. when we can communicate that with them, like, listen, I hear what you're saying. Um, I will take care of this today. You know, urgency, mm-hmm. You that will resolve more conflict than you can imagine. And, 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 and I've seen it, I've done it myself, uh, for, for 15 years, I train others and Mm -hmm. I always make them understand like, this is very important to me and I'm going to take care of this. Please give me 24 to 48 hours. If it's a refund and I have the authority to process it right now, we're going to take care of it because I want them to know that what is important to them is important to me. Again, it's yeah. all about that communication. And when you can make them feel that way, how are they going to view you? Yeah. Friends for life. Like, <laughs> they're they're going to say, they're going to say they value me more than just a number. They value me as an individual, as a human being, as we're creating relationships. We're fostering loyalty. This is not transactional. And so, um, so those are some of the things that, you know, that, that we talk about, that we train, you know, me, we, I mean, we, (laughs) (laughs) that I train and, um, and it's fun and I love it. And, and I totally love it. I'm very passionate about talking about all things, communication and, and customer service, um, because it truly genuinely makes a direct impact, not only on the bottom line, because we're still running a business, right? Mm -hmm. But on the doctor, you know, what's the saying? Happy life, happy wife. Well, happy patients, happy doctor and team. (laughs) So everyone, like it's it's a win-win situation. And uh, in the most successful practices, they have a very high level of communication within their team, with their patients, very high level, not bare minimum. They mm-hmm. have a very, very high level of communication. They are taught this skill, both verbal and nonverbal. And, and, you know, and, and, and there's, there's, there's tons of data out there as well, like from all different types of organization, Dale Carnegie organization. I'm thinking of another leadership organization that talked about communication and customer service. Um, um, John Maxwell, you know, he has a foundation as well. I mean, there are so many T- Tony Robbins, there are huge, um, or there are so many individuals that talk about communication and customer service and how it really does influence everyone within the practice or in your life. And it does reduce stress, you know, and that's, that's what you're there for. So <laughs> you help yeah, them well, do that. Because <laughs> thinking about, I mean, there are so many pressures on everybody day to day and so many things to think about how can a busy healthcare provider prioritize exceptional service to their patients without burning out is there a way that they can do that absolutely um i was it's so funny because i was just talking to another doctor on a call last week about this you know it honestly genuinely it all goes back down to being very intentional about your practice about your life about your personal life, your professional life, uh, if if you're into spirituality, into that. Wherever your focus goes on is where it where you're going to be successful on. So mm-hmm. if you're only focusing on one area of your life, just this one little area, then you're going to neglect a lot of other areas. And oftentimes I see that doctors, you know, they're just focusing on work, 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 work right? You know, um, and they are not attending to their mental and physical well-being. Uh, Even sometimes their relationships, their friendships, you know, sadly, sometimes their marriages are being neglected. And, um, and it doesn't have to be that way. Mm -hmm. There's, there's a better way. And if you can be very intentional, like even taking one hour, let's say on Sunday, or two hours on Sunday to plan out 
about your week of how you're going to dedicate your time to your patients, be present with your patients. But then once you're off, you're off. And now you can reset and be present with your family. And this is a skill that also needs to be learned. And so mm -hmm. that's why there's exceptional coaches like you and Laura that help doctors do that. This is not a skill you're born with. You're not born how to communicate effectively. You're not born, a you know, how to, how yeah. to have a, be a good dentist. These are all skills you need to learn. And so I'm a really big believer that if you don't, know how to do it and you want to learn how to do it, then you should reach out to someone to coach you um, um, because it will be transformative for your life. And this is something that I actively work on every week. Um, sometimes I work more than I'd like in the week, mm -hmm. right? I find myself working late and, uh, and sometimes my husband, he's, I love my husband. He's one of my biggest cheerleaders. He's like, babe, you know, he's kind of like my little, you know, all right, you know, it's been, it's been, it's been a long day, you know? And I said, you know what, you're right. And then we shut the, you know, I shut the laptop off. Okay. I'm done. And so, um, um, but again, just being very intentional mm -hmm. and not letting certain things fall through the cracks and delegating is everything. And mm -hmm. I'm still learning this as well. If you get to a point where you're too busy, which is a good problem if you think about it, then delegate the things that 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 you don't need to do. Find mm -hmm. someone on Task Rabbit, pay them ten dollars an hour. If you need someone to come and clean your house, there's cleaning people that can do that. You know, if you need a meal a uh, meal services, there's there's companies out there that can do those things for you now, you know? And so that'll create a lot of time and space for you to have, to give back to yourself or to your family or to your business. So there's a lot of different tools and techniques, but, um, but being intentional, having a plan for the week, I would say number one, number two is um, in addition to that is delegate whatever is not a big rock, right? Like, mm -hmm delegated uh, to someone, get a personal assistant. I mean, you can even find a personal assistant these days through virtual, virtual assistants. You know, they're super affordable. Get a yeah. virtual assistant, you know? And so that's just like two, two or three things, you know, and there's mm -hmm. tons, there's tons of other different resources and definitely reach out if you uh, want to hire a coach to help you build out your life. Um, someone like Karen and Laura that really help dentists strategically with their mental and physical well-being while being a, a wife and a spouse or you know a husband and running a practice it's a lot it's a lot to manage yeah you've got you're you're a wise lady Daniela <laughs> you're very wise and you've got I mean everything that you say it's just it's it's so simple but yet on the serve when somebody is in the midst of a busy time and things aren't quite going as they want or it's difficult to see these things and I think that's where you are a star at being able it's it's not really difficult stuff but you're helping people see that and understand it um so if somebody's been listening to you today and I've you know I've listened to things I'm like Oh my gosh, I can I can already think of people that need to talk to you. Um, how can people get in contact with you? Um, what offer do you have for them? Maybe share a little bit about what you can do. Yeah. For so I offer, I'm offering a 30 minute discovery call. It'll probably be about 40 minute, uh, 40 minute, 40 minute or 40 to 45 minute discovery call where we'll really we'll really delve into whatever specific area you're having within your dental practice, because I am a practice management consultant. Um, um, and, and usually everyone does at least one area, right? Um, just use hashtag mint door. Mm -hmm. And also you can reach me on Facebook at Daniela Skeen, uh, my email, Daniela R. Skeen at Gmail, and also my website, which is being rebranded, but I do at least have my contact form, which is www.dentaedge.com. And okay. I can send that to you. But yeah, uh, this has been great. And, and it, just like you were saying, it's not rocket science. 
I, I, I oftentimes when I start uh, working with uh, t uh, team members and dentists and I'm like, you've probably heard all of this before. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, it's not rocket science, but it's the execution. Mm, and and yeah. that's why I'm a big proponent and believer of coaches and consultants, because we're see the areas that you're lacking in weekend and we can help you with the vision while you're actually executing on the technique and goal. Right. You can't do all of it. Right. Mm -hmm. It's and, and if you can, it is very challenging. Um, um, but I want them to focus on dentistry, on patient care. And uh, and if they have an interest in learning how to build a practice, because some actually genuinely do, then that's cool, too. You know, so but they it's very challenging for them to run a very successful dental practice, manage it because that is an entire job and mm. be a full time dentist. Yeah, I don't think I've seen one just in my experience. I typically see two either two partners or one dental wife that one is running the, the management aspect and then one's actually executing um, yeah. because it's just, there's not enough time in the day. Yeah, it is. And I think that's part of the secret is that the solutions are not complicated and they're there to make your life easier. Whilst if somebody has a complex solution for you, it's likely to make life more difficult. So yeah, the, the secret to your success is, helping these people in ways that makes life simpler. Yep. And makes that's right. it different to those happy patients that keep coming back through the door. So yeah. Yeah. I think your smile yeah. must be infectious to them as well when you go. Oh, thank people, you. People, people, you do come across people who don't smile. Um, but I would guess that when you're smiling at them, it's hard not to smile back. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Well, you have a beautiful smile. I oh, try to smile um, as much as I can because I feel it, makes me feel better. So mm -hmm. um, I, I actually took one of, this is just like for us, uh, Tony Robbins, Unleash Her Power Within. It's like an eight week program. And he uses different techniques to get us out of our emotional state. And so if I'm feeling a little down, you know, sometimes I'll scream, yes, yes, yes. Or I'll like mm -hmm. slap loud or I'll just smile. And he's like, just laugh. And, you know, <laughs> and listen, surprisingly, they work. And they um and my is to spread kindness and spread positivity. And one way, one free way is to smile. And I share that when I'm working with team members, just, just that one thing, it's free, it costs you nothing. Yeah. Just smiling, Yeah. you know. I'm completely with you on that one. Smiling is huge. My dad would say that this, your smile is the window box. It's the first thing people will see when they walk up to you is the fact that you're smiling and you're a friendly, happy person. And it goes a very long way. It definitely does. So, and we really appreciate you, uh, Danny, being here today and sharing all your wisdom with us. And we will put all the links um, to everything that you've mentioned in the show notes that will accompany this podcast so that anybody who wants to get in touch with Danny and take advantage of that uh, complimentary consultation, they can do. So thank you so much for being here. It's been a pleasure. Um, our listeners, we hope you found some encouragement in today's episode. And remember that we do adore you. And uh, it's been fantastic. And we hope to do this again sometime, Danny. Yes, thank you. It's been an honor and a pleasure. Thank you so much for having okay. me on. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. We adore our listeners. Connect with us at themadore.net.